What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Tim Sports Talk, and we got another W. That's two in a row for the first time this season. The Washington football team beats the Carolina Panthers, bringing back Cam Newton, Superman, who actually had a pretty decent day. Uh, he didn't take a sack until the last play of the game, which was huge. But 27, excuse me, 21 for 27, 189 yards and two touchdowns for Mr. Cam Newton. But he was outdone by Taylor Heineke, 16 for 22, 206 yards and three touchdowns for Mr. Taylor Heineke. What a game this was. And it honestly was similar to last week, even though we didn't have the lead the entire game last week. But we again allowed a touchdown on the opening drive. Again. Ugh. We just seemed to struggle so bad on that opening drive. But, so they went up 7 nothing. Then a couple drives later, we came back and tied it up 7 apiece. Then they went ahead again 14-7. to Then we tied it up. Then we went ahead 21 to 14. Then they tied it up. So it was a back and forth, both teams throwing punches throughout the entire game. But it was Washington that had the last laugh, if you want to say. 27 21. They got two field goals to ice this game, stopping Carolina on two big fourth downs. Cam the Bam Curl made a huge tackle immediately as Christian McCaffrey. Made the catch inches away from the first down. Could not get there. That was the first turnover on downs. Then the second turnover. James Smith-Williams and Deron Payne combined for the only sack of the day to end it on fourth and three. And we got to do the victory formation from then on out. Antonio Gibson, 19 carries, 95 yards. It would be all sunshines and rainbows if he did not Fumble of football for the only turnover of the game from both teams, if you don't count turnovers on downs. But the only fumble or interception of the game was came from Antonio Gibson. And Antonio Gibson basically got benched for the remainder of the second quarter. But then he came out in the second half and had himself a day. I, 19 carries, 95 yards. That's five yards a carry. He was all over the place. You gotta love to see Antonio Gibson bouncing back after the turnover and bouncing back and responding to Ron Rivera in a positive way that it wasn't, oh, woe is me. They benched me. I'm upset. I'm mad. Whatever. Nope. When he got back in the game, he stepped up big time. And who also stepped up in the absence was J.D. McKissick. In that time, I believe he had about 35 yards on six carries or something like that with Antonio Gibson out of the game. So that was huge. And he was big on that touchdown drive before the half. And the touchdown before the half came to Terry McLaurin, who had another solid day, five catches, 103 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, you know, we don't get him enough targets. Uh, he did have a kind of a drop today. He he, we threw a deep pass to him, and he didn't really like stay under it right. And he kind of jumped early, and he didn't time it properly, and it ended up being like a drop slash incomplete pass. But outside of that, the dude is awesome, and I wish we could get him more targets. But until we have like a true number two, I guess we can't. John Bates, you know, he is not the best tight end in the world, but man, did he not come up huge with a big catch on fourth and three that allowed us to take the lead. Remember, we went for it on fourth and three in a tied game, 21-21, on their 45-yard line or so, I think. And if we didn't get that, they're in prime position to get the field goal right and what a gutsy call by Ron Rivera and what a play by Taylor Heineke to John Bates Heineke bought so much time on that play uh, it, he started on his right looking looking then he went back to the left nobody was there he got flushed out of the pocket to the left thought about running for it I think it was Brian Burns that shut that down he couldn't run and then going off his back foot leaning backwards sidearm throw finding John Bates in the zone and ending up getting the first down. That was critical, 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 critical in this game. Let's take a look here at the team stats, because this is fun to look at. 36 minutes to 24 minutes. That's two games in a row 
that we absolutely crushed in the time of possession. I think last week it was like 33 to 21 or something like, or sorry, 39 to 21 or something like that. Like absolutely domination. And this week, not much different, especially in the second half. Uh, also, the defense finally getting off the field on a lot of third downs. Two for nine on third downs. That's the best by far this year. I think last week we were four for 10, and that was like the best before this week. So finally, finally, the defense is starting to get off the field on third downs. We were historically bad on third downs the first half of the season. It was pathetic. Over 50% of the time, they were getting first downs. We are finally starting to, you know, turn that faucet off. Hey, fix the leak. Let's get some stops. That is huge. And then on offense, on the other hand, we went 6 for 13 on third downs, which is fine. It's plenty good enough. But then to top that off, we went 2 for 2 on fourths. So that's basically the equivalent of 8 of 13 on third downs. Because if you failed a third down, then you got a fourth down. If you completed that, it's basically like you'd completed the third down, no harm, no foul. So 8 for 13 is huge on drives like that. All right. What else can I talk about in this game? I mean, this game, this game had a lot. This game had a lot. Washington's defense, the zone is so, so bad. It. I'm so glad Jack Del Rio and Ron Rivera finally switched to man-to-man in those key downs because it seemed like every third down in the beginning or fourth down or – like every key down, we were going to that zone and Cam Newton was slicing us up. We cannot play zone. Our linebackers are horrible at zone. And we're not great at man-to-man either, but when you you compare the two, there's no comparison. The zone is horrible for us. And it was the man-to-man. Uh, you think about early in the game, they went to Christian McCaffrey and Danny Johnson. No, they went to, excuse me, DJ Moore. And Danny Johnson was on the coverage and we got a... Tr- uh, third down stop there uh christian mccaffrey on that fourth down uh like cameron curl is just all over the place what a beast cameron curl is i I, chris likes to say he's the best defender player i think it's jonathan allen which jonathan allen of course made noise in the run game today uh we don't blitz enough but anyway cameron curl though is phenomenal what a steal out of arkansas for a seventh round pick he is just you know he had a big mistake on the Cam Newton touchdown run. But outside of that, he just, he comes up big when you need it. And it's so nice to, it's so refreshing to see somebody in our secondary just consistently cover dudes. Like nobody's perfect, but he's one of the, you couldn't ask for much more consistency. I, I mean, I, unless you're looking for Cameron Curl to be Darrell Rivas, you know, Island or whatever, you're not going to get much better than what he's providing. And it's so nice to see because the rest of our secondary is uh, questionable at best. Um, let's see. <sighs> what a game this was. Jarrett Patterson, you know, he had seven carries, 23 yards, but he had a nice 11 yard carry. I think it was on a third down and like four or two. Got a big first down for us. Uh, DeAndre Carter. I mean, is he not worth his weight in gold? another touchdown and I don't think before this year he had a single touchdown in his career he's already got three touchdowns through the air and a return touchdowns through this season and as a guy that was a pretty much a cheap pickup just supposed to be a return man for him to step up in a Curtis Samuels absence was absolutely huge and hey then you got Cam Sims coming up with two big catches one of them on third down where he caught it with his hands as he got hit. That was beautiful. And then, of course, the touchdown on the slant pass from Heineke. Uh, that's exactly where you want Cam Sims to be used because Cam Sims is a six foot five, 215-pound human being. He ain't small. Red zones need big, huge dudes, and that's where you want to use a guy like Cam Sims, and they used him to perfection, basically. And Cam Sims made them correct there. Not much out of Humphreys today. Who else on the defense? You know, the defense the defense is doing actually a really solid job in the absence of Montez Sweat and Chase Young. You know, before the season, if you said that, hey, halfway through the year, you're going to lose Chase Young and Montez Sweat, everybody would have thought the year was over. Yet, for some reason, their two best defensive performances – came when Chase Young was out of the game last week and Montez Wood, of course, 
and now n- they've never played the game and never played in the game today, and yet for some reason our defense is playing the best defense it's played all all season long. That's insane. Uh, I, you know, Chris made a point last week. It's like they're not being selfish. They're playing more team defensive line ball, right? Like they're getting after the quarterback as a group, but it's something because you, you can't have guys like Chase Young and Montez Sweat, the talent they bring, and for some reason you can't get after the quarterback, but you're getting way more pressure without them. It makes no sense in the world. None whatsoever. Man, this game was fun. This game was a fun one to watch. Thank you guys so much for everybody who was in the – live stream uh like that was a lot of fun we had 944 viewers or something crazy like that it was it was an awesome play-by-play session but oh you know what i just thought about this too ron rivera ron rivera (laughs) he nearly blundered the touchdown before the half i mean we got fortunate that uh taylor heineke found terry mclaurin in the end zone from about 14 15 yards out but we had 50 seconds on the clock, and I believe it was second and 10. And he runs the ball up the middle with two timeouts, may I add, two timeouts, runs the ball up the middle, and doesn't call timeout and just lets 35 seconds go off the clock. And so after that next play, instead of with 50 seconds left, the next play, we only had 14 seconds left on the clock at the 15-yard line. Like, you could do so much if you had 30 seconds, 35 seconds on the clock instead of, like, they didn't even hurry up to the line. It was weird. But instead, you just wasted all that time. You had 14 seconds left on the clock. And as I said, fortunately enough, Taylor Heineke found Terry McLaurin in the back of the end zone. But if it wasn't for that, that is a huge, huge blunder that needs to be looked at severely. Uh, he also had a weird coaching blunder with the challenge. He challenged a forward pass from on the trick play from Christian McCaffrey. I mean, in real time, I knew that was a bad call. Like in real, like I didn't even need the replay, and I like I was watching it, and I saw like I I made sure to pay attention. Oh yeah, that went backwards. Like it's a weird play, but it clearly went backwards when you watched it the very first time, and then when you watch it the second time, it clearly went back backwards a yard. Like it wasn't even close to a challengeable play and you just wasted a timeout in the second half he can't do that you you you, come on whoever's in the booth needs to let him know no bad time to challenge don't challenge that that's horrible horrible time to throw a challenge flag uh meanwhile he should have threw a challenge flag if you're gonna waste a timeout anyway on the christian mccaffrey play earlier in the game now i said at the time like it wasn't that big of a deal because it was going to be a first down what no matter how you slice it but he, Chris McCaffrey was clearly down, and he got an extra, like, 5 to 10 yards because he got spun around. His head hit, helmet hit the ground, so that's down by contact. But the refs didn't see it, and they let him get a 5 to 7 extra yards or something like that. And Ron Rivera needs to throw the challenge flag there instead of an obvious no-time-to-challenge kind of a call. So that was bad. Uh, the officiating in this game didn't – like, I didn't notice anything horrible. Uh, like, it was a couple of – critical holding penalties for us one of them i remember that was obviously a holding i mean the guy had him wrapped up like this and he ends up tackling him you, you got to have your hands on the inside of the arms not the outside you're gonna get called for that every single time but those were huge because i think both of those came on like 10 yard run plays for mccaffrey so that definitely helped us big time but this offensive line i think we found a, a secret in our offensive line today. I really do. Wes Switzer at center needs to be a thing. I like Trace Ruye. I do. But I think I like Wes Switzer more in the blocking. I really like Wes Switzer. And with him, Eric Flowers, and Brandon Sheriff on the interior of that line, that is a phenomenal interior line of course you have sam cosby on the right side who's been a, just an absolute revelation second round pick from texas i thought he needed a year i was so wrong this guy is a beast on the right side of our line uh and then charles leno is a solid left tackle you know right around average probably maybe slightly below average in this league but still plenty good enough and the offensive line has been phenomenal like all the sacks that taylor heineke's been taking the last two weeks 
are coverage sacks that he's not getting rid of the football. He's got to learn to get rid of the football. And I'm not, I'm not talking about putting it in harm's way. I'm talking about throwing it out of bounds and not taking the sack. But he does it too often where I think he got sacked six times last week and then he got sacked three times this week, and they're pretty much all coverage sacks. Rarely is he just blown up right away, right? Um, you know, a lot of people like to hate on the play calling on this team. And, of course, you if you nitpick, you're, you're going to find some plays. Like the one weird double reverse fake thing, handing it into a jet sweep on second and seven and you lose three yards. Can we not do that one? Like, it didn't look right. Uh, Taylor Heineke was all over the place. It it's, wasn't ran properly. It's way too many moving pieces. Uh, it, it was... I see what he's trying to do, but it completely failed and ended up getting blown up. It, it, let's let's take the, that kind of a play. I'm fine with the jet sweep here or there, but like the weird motions in the backfield, I would rather use those guys to block instead of try to distract. And because those guys back in the backfield, I think there's two guys that basically can't be used to block. So now you have, what, six, seven blockers on 11 defenders? That's not enough. Like, you're going to get crushed quite often in that kind of a scenario. So let's get rid of that play. Um, you know, there was another weird play on a third and short where Heineke, it was like, I think it was the first drive. Heineke just immediately runs to the right and nobody runs their route. And so it was like, was it supposed to be a run play? Because then we got an illegal, he threw it away and we got an illegal man downfield. So we lost yardage. That was a weird play too. I don't know what exactly happened there, but I, I don't know. And another thing about Scott Turner is I wish he would scheme open Terry McLaurin more. I really do. Uh, we need to run more. Uh, there was so many times he was one-on-one -on -one man coverage. Throw it up to him or run a slant. Give him something to give him a one-on-one -on -one beater, basically. Right? Like, we threw it downfield on a third and nine, which was huge. A go route for Terry McLaurin, back shoulder, catch, beautiful, first down. Where are more of those? It's Terry frickin' McLaurin. He runs a 4-3, 5-40-yard dash. He's one of the better receivers in this league. He can totally handle running a one-on-one -on -one route, destroying people. I mean, his rookie year, he was destroying Stephon Gilmore. You're telling me that Stephon Gilmore can't get destroyed now? Come on. It's just, it, it, come on, you, we, we got to be smarter than that. But I don't know. What a win. What a win. 27-21, Washington on top. Great team win again for the second week of the row. S second week in a row. Can we make the playoffs? Can we make the playoffs? Talking about playoffs? Playoffs? I don't know. <laughs> But, hey, thanks for watching to the end. Thanks for all the new subscribers. And, hey, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Also, in the description below, there's a Discord link. Hop on our Discord and come talk some football. And last but not least, there are donation links in the description below. If you feel so kind, you can donate to the channel. And there's a second channel now, Tim and Jarrett Sports Talk. Go subscribe to that channel also. And thank you, everybody. And until next time. See ya!